Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to another tutorial for Unity 3D, where we're working on a board game, the Royal Game of Ur. I want to give a shout out to Dude Chain, which provided a couple of, or who provided a couple of uh, new graphics for a game, some lovely new tiles over here, as well as some 3D looking dice. These are just 2D images, but they look 3D, probably rendered in a 3D program, I assume. So uh, Duchen went and uh, provided a couple of uh, of changes through the GitHub, so we have these lovely new pictures. So thank you very much for that. Okay, in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to add more of a concept of state management to keep track, um, in the first part, which player is the current player, player one or two. Now do note... Internally, we're going to be referring to the player IDs or player indexes as 0 or 1. 0 is the first number in most programming things, so they're going to be players 0 and 1. But when we display it publicly to the, the viewer, we will have current player 1, O-N-E, and 2, T-W-O, um, just because, you know, that looks better overall. Now, one of the things we're going to address is a couple of different ways about a couple of different concepts about organizing our program. For example, currently, we have this dice roller over here, right? The dice roller is a two things. One, dice roller is a game object in the in the Unity hierarchy over here in our current scene. It is a game object, but we also have a script called dice roller. And this script is responsible for doing a couple of different things. One, it goes and randomly generates a, a die roll for us by simulating the roll of, of four dice and then storing that into a value, right? If we go and big in this, right, we have the roll the dice script. This is an action, this is an activity, and this activity stores some data for us. Um, first thing it does is it stores the value of all four dice in here, which it uses to update its display of which dice graphic to show. That's it. Um, then it also keeps a total of the the dice that were rolled and this is used by a couple things one it's used by the dice total display to actually show a number on the screen it's also used by the player stone script which is responsible for me moving the player stone the correct number of steps i still apologize that this ended up being a little bit more code heavy and not necessarily as slickly organized as i would normally like in a tutorial uh and probably we're going to go and restructure a couple things over here um which will make it look a little nicer it's the same it's going to be the same exact code but it should be a little bit more intuitive when we take our next pass at this. Um, so it stores that dice total. It also keeps a certain state around of, hey, are we done rolling the die? Yes or no. Um, as far as I know, the only thing using is done rolling over here is the dice total display, because if is done rolling is false, it pops up a question mark in the display. Otherwise, if it's true, it actually reads the value and shows that over here. Now, we are going to need some extra stateful stuff this time uh, or now, because we need to know, hey, Whose player? What turn is it? Is it player one or player two? Because we want to know if we're removing the white stones or the black stones. Um, also, right now, we have it so that um, there's animations going on, right? Which is what a bunch of that work was last time. If we click over here, you know, it animates that way. But there's currently nothing stopping us from clicking multiple times. Or even, this is a little tricky to do, you can actually click a stone while it's in midair animating and going again. So obviously, we, there needs to be some kind of concept of a, hey, we already clicked on a stone. Don't let us click a second time. The other thing that's going to come up soon is on the, the board here, there's actually a few tiles which let you roll again when you land on it. I think you roll again and move the same stone. I'm actually not sure. I'm going to say I'm going to have to double check the rules over there, whether it's the same stone that moves a second time or if it just gives you a second roll in general. Um, so we'll have to verify that. But clearly, that's going to be another sort of state of awareness. So there's a few things. We need to know what player it is, and we need to know what the current game state is, because things rely on it. And what we could do is we could have a whole bunch more objects like the dice roller. For example, I have the... Um, oh, is this just called text? Let's rename this to uh, current player text over here. There we go. Current player text over here. I suppose we could add a script to this for current player. That tracks, is it player one, is it player two? Um, and then, you know, in our, let's say, um, oh, in our player stone script, then not only do we need to keep a reference to the dice roller, so we know how many dice are rolled, but we need to keep a, a reference to the player, the current player object, so that we can find out if it's the right player or not, etc., etc., etc. This will start to mean we'll need a lot of references to a lot of different things. Now, inevitably, in larger projects, you do tend to need to have 
a, a variety of different bookkeeping devices or, or yeah, devices or scripts or objects or something like that, just because having just one might get too big and bulky and cumbersome. Um, however, this is a smaller project. It certainly makes sense, the idea that maybe there should be one central thing to keep track of, of the master state of the game. Is it player one's turn or player's two turn? Has the player already rolled? In fact, maybe we should track there what the, the, the total is. Because if we're already going to have to reference a, uh, a state object to find out whose turn it is, then we might as well just store the die rolls in there. That way the player stone doesn't need to look up the dice roller, it can just look up the game state. And then you get the idea of, okay, this game state object isn't actually going to have a whole lot of logic in it. It's not going to be very active. It's going to be a bookkeeping object. Its primary role is going to be to store these states and also make sure that these states are valid and legal. It's going to be responsible for that bookkeeping. Whereas something like Dice Roller, this thing is still going to be quite an active object. I think we're going to keep in the roll the dice behavior here in the dice roller, um, but instead of storing the dice total in here, we'll store it in the player state. I think the dice roller can still keep the state of each individual die in here, because we, the only thing we use the state of each individual die for is to display the right graphic on the screen for the die roll, which is what this dice roller is responsible for. So now we've got this nice little segregation of duty, and that's a great, great thing to have. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Unity over here, and I'm going to create an empty game object here. And this game object is only going to be responsible to manage the game's state. Um, sometimes I call this the game manager object or the game state object. Um, now I actually try to avoid starting the object name or rather the class name with the word game because every time I go to type game object or game manager, the autocomplete always gives me the wrong one. Uh, so instead we're going to just call this the state manager. Okay, it's responsible for managing the state of the game. Um, and we're going to attach a script to this. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new script. C sharp script over here, and I'm going to call this state manager. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, drag the state manager script as a component on the state manager game object. And I don't think it's actually going to matter, but it's going to be usually a good idea to go and just bring this game object to the zero 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 position. Um, it very rarely is a thing, but sometimes if you end up spawning things and you want to make it a child of a parent, like there, there might be things that you'll do in some of these scripts where the position, if you don't have it centered, you'll find yourself with like a weird little thing of like, Hey, why is that over there? I don't, I didn't expect that. So just get in the habit and it's a good idea. So the state manager object has a state manager script on it. So it's going to be responsible for doing things like, um, it's going to have, it's mostly going to be just public things that other things will access. For example, what, what's the current player's turn? Now, keep in mind, we are publicly going to be calling the players player one and player two, but in programming, things like arrays and everything like that, you know, you're referring to things by their index and things start like the first item is the thing with index zero and the second item is the thing with index one. So internally, I think it makes great sense for us to uh, track the players based on this sort of index or ID starting at zero. So I'm going to call this, I'm going to have an integer called current player ID. And it would default to zero, but let's make it explicit just to be clear. Now, because this could basically only be player one or player two, you could have a Boolean here, you know, like is player one or something like that. But I think this makes more sense. And in theory, you know, if this suddenly we find a way to expand it to a four player game and really with, I mean, we'd need a different board. But literally, we can make this a four-player version of this game simply by going into the board over here and adding some more, some more squares. And there might still be a big middle shared section in the middle, but then you can have, uh, you'd have more elements here for like the branching. Maybe, maybe there's a shared middle thing and then player like one and two, so the zeroth and the first player, both go to the same thing on one side of the board. And the, uh, the third and fourth player, that is to say element two and element three would then both go to the right and then they, that would then split again like you could totally do that with the setup we've got there's no reason you couldn't make this a four player game so let's set things up just in case we decide to change things later so we're gonna have a current player id we'll start with player id zero first player although maybe at start a game you're gonna want to randomize which side starts first hey that's a neat idea we could totally do that what else are we gonna do well i want to get the bookkeeping out of um dice roller 
okay? Dice roller right now has some bookkeeping values. Dice values over here, that's sort of internal bookkeeping so that it can apply, apply its, its own graphics. We could move it to the state manager, but I don't think we need it there. Maybe we'll consider changing it later if it comes up. But dice total and is done rolling, these are both things that are referenced by other script. Dice total and is done rolling are both referenced by dice total display over here. And technically player stone doesn't actually verify that is done right rolling is set which we probably will want to do, but it certainly checks to see what the... Oh, it does actually over here. Is done rolling, for example. It does check that, and it also checks to see what the total number of moves are um, for spaces to move over here and different things. Spaces to move. There we go. So is done rolling and dice total. So we're going to take these two bookkeeping values. I'm just going to grab them. I'm going to just cut. I'm going to save this script. And in state manager, I'm going to paste over here. Now... If I do that, we will we will have broken the other scripts because these other scripts are currently looking to the dice roller for this information. But the dice roller doesn't have this information anymore. So what we're going to do is, for our player stone, we're going to come way up over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this. Instead of dice roller, this is in fact going to be state manager is the type of object. And we may as well rename the variable to be more sensible. I mean, this variable could be anything. It could be Bob. But let's name it something like, hey, the state manager. A uh, trick in mono develop that you can do here is if you hit F2, you can then type something like the state manager and hit enter. And this will have automatically done a find and replace on this variable. Um, you could you could do an actual, you know, you could actually use the, the real, you know, sort of find and replace in uh, search over here. Um, but the advantage of this is this version's slightly smaller, smarter because Mono Develop is aware of where the actual variables are as opposed to things that might be in comments and things. Anyway, there's a slight difference, but it's also very handy to just hit F2 and do that. So now we have a variable called the state manager, and it's of type state manager. The only thing we have to do is right over here, game object, find object of type. Right now it's trying to find the very first dice roller in the um, in your hierarchy, in your scene. So we're just going to change that to be the very first state manager. But having done that, everything else will be fixed. We can see that there's nothing in red, and if we uh, pop back out over here, we'll get no compilation errors for the player stones. There's still errors from some of our other scripts, but that's okay. We're now going to go to dice total display. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to call this the state manager, and this is going to become state manager, and we're going to find the first state manager in the scene. Everything else stays exactly the same. And then finally, there's the dice roller over here, because it was using is done rolling and dice total as an internal variable or property. Um, so we need to now go and get, just like over here, we need to go and snag a copy of the state manager in the dice roller. So right after start, we're going to go and define this public state manager. Actually, I like to have all my publics together right after the start, because you initialize, here's all our var variables, and then you get all your game code a little bit later, which kind of makes sense to me. Um, so we're going to copy this line over here. So again, we've got We've now got this variable here for the state manager. We just have to make sure it gets populated. So we're going to oops, paste that in like that. So now dice roller has a reference to state manager. And what we need to do is say, yeah, is done rolling doesn't belong to dice roller. Instead, it's a part of the state manager. And the dice total over here, same thing. That's a part of the state manager. And this dice total here. And then finally is done rolling. We're going to do that. Now, assuming I haven't forgot anything, compile, compile, compile. There we go. No errors, just the messages from the last time I played. If I go and hit play, we should be exactly where we were. Roll the dice, click here. Excellent. Everything is still working the way it was. But the nice thing is we have a single central location to keep track of the state. The dice roller still does the work of rolling dice. I'm at player stone is responsible for moving the player stones. And the dice total display is responsible for setting that little number over here. I think that's great. Single purpose job for everything. Lovely. Let's talk about our state over here. Clearly, I think at this point, you could say that our game turn, so when it's your player's turn, there's basically three phases of the turn. There's the phase where we're waiting for the player to roll the die, or the dice, I should say, because there's many of them. So there's a turn where you're waiting for them to, to roll the dice. There's the phase where you're waiting for them to click on a stone, choose which stone they're moving. And then finally, there's the phase where we're waiting for the, the, the stone 
to be animated because we don't want to skip to the next player's turn until the stones are done moving. We'll figure out what we want to do about the uh, the roll again square when we double check the rules and figure out exactly what the roll again square is going to do. I think it gives you a full other turn actually. So that'll be interesting because it means if you land on the roll again square, then what we have to do is reset the turn state back to I'm waiting for you to roll the dice. Now, we can keep track of this a number of different ways. Um, because these game states are like basically mutually exclusive, right? You can't be waiting for a die roll and waiting for an animation, really. It sort of kind of doesn't make sense. Um, it feels like um, I'm probably something like an enum. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just make an argument for the enum here, but we're not going to use the enum uh, for two reasons. Um, the biggest reason is because I just want to keep the programming a little bit more straightforward and simple. Um, plus, there's a few other things going involved. If you want to keep track, use an enum to keep track of your state, you probably do something like public enum and call it something like um, turn phase. Yeah, I like that. So a turn will have multiple phases. It has the phase where it's, say, waiting for roll, another one where it's waiting for click, and finally, it has another one where we're waiting for um, animation, I guess. These are the phases of any one player's turn. Um, and then you would have something like public, turn, phase, uh, current, phase. And obviously, you can interact with this as by making them properties with getters and setters. You could advance things in a variety of different ways. Um, you know, you could have a, a public uh, void, you know, advance phase that moves things forward. You can have a lot of different ways to interact with this. Um, and that's that's perfectly, perfectly sensible. It's a little bit more state machine-y as well. It might come up. Um, and it might be ideal. It's also much, much less likely often to lead to bugs where you have like one thing in one like you have one boolean set true and another one set false where it sort of doesn't make sense that that sort of thing could happen but we're just going to stick with the booleans here because um i feel like it'll be a little easier for new programs to sort of understand but i want to acknowledge that the enums are great um for lots of different reasons so but i think one thing that's quite interesting with this enum discussion is it clearly makes evident that the phases the phase logic is really I'm waiting for you to do this next thing. That's the phase. I kind of don't want to know, am I done rolling? I more want to know, are we currently waiting for the player to roll the dice? Because, like, is done rolling is perfectly fine, but what's the next step? Um, I guess, is done clicking? I guess that's fine. Um, and then, oops. And then public bool is done animating. You know what? I guess that would be okay. I was going to say, we might be just waiting. You, waiting, you do something like the opposite. So, like, waiting for roll, true. Waiting for clicking, true. Wait. Yeah, okay, you know what? That That's kind of okay. But you can see we need a lot more variables, and we'll need to, like, keep things a little cleaner going this way. Um, but that's what we're going to have. Those are our three phases that we're going to sort of kind of keep track that way. The enum would probably be better, but let's keep going with this. Um, you know, rather than just navel gaze about it forever. One of the things to note is dice roller right now, the dice roller has a function on it called new turn. As it happens, I don't think this is actually getting called or used anywhere, but new turn is responsible for starting a new turn and resetting some of the states. I think it's quite obvious that this function here, we're not gonna want it in the dice roller. That's not where this belongs. I'm gonna cut this out. I think it makes a lot more sense. Now, while state manager is not gonna be very active, I think something like starting a new turn really makes sense as a job for the state manager to reset the state for a new turn. So we're going to do that. So we can set is done rolling false. And here's an example of, again, why the enums might be a little nicer. We have to make sure to reset all of these little bookkeeper variables along the way. Okay, but there we go. Here, we'll do that line up. Looks kind of sexy and cool. So we reset all the duns to zero and we get ready to start a new turn. And that's pretty much okay. Um, new turn would probably advance the player as well. To do. Advance player. Which would be to update. Well, I guess that's just changing the, the current player ID, right? So something like current player ID, we want to move to the next one, so we would advance it. But I guess one of the questions is how many players are in the game? So we're going to have 
I guess we can make a public integer um, number of players. And we're going to set this to two. You know, in theory, this is something that could be configured um, by some menu option or something. We really won't have that in our particular build here, but you could tune this. So then all of a sudden, um, current player ID, we can do something like, okay, our current player ID is going to be equal to our current player ID plus one, but we're going to want to wrap this in a modulo operation for number of players. So um, if current player ID is zero, zero plus one, it will be one. So we'll end up storing one. If it's already one, one plus one is equal to two, which would be illegal because our player IDs are zero and one. But this modulo here makes it so that you're trying to divide and have a remainder. So if it ends up being two, two modulo two, it will wrap you around back to zero. So we can put that in there. So this will guarantee that we always have player ID of either zero or one. Hey, that sounds pretty good. Okay, so there's our new turn logic in there. Let's go and wire up the rest of these states over here to make sure that they are working the way that they want, that we want. So over in player stone over here, for example, right? So player stone, we got this whole update. We've got everything. Here's the mouse up, okay? Um, right now we're saying, so we bail. If we haven't rolled the dice yet, we've got to get out of here, right? If, if done rolling is, is false, we, we're not allowed to move yet. The next question is, hey, the state manager, um, are we done clicking? Like, have we clicked already? If this is equal to true, Again, you don't actually need the, the the double equal true here, but like, but let's make it explicit. And we've already done a move, so we're just going to return. I'm going to get rid of the debug option here for the click, so that we don't um, just spam that in the log because we don't need that. So now we're double checking. Hey, have we already clicked? Oh, okay, return true. So then what we're going to do is with our move over here, we're going to make sure to set it to true. Um, so we're going to say something like that state manager dot is done clicking is equal to true done. Um, we don't need the to do for animate because we actually are animating, which is great. We're not actually, we're not teleporting to the final tile. We are actually doing the animation, which is great, but there will be a little to do here, uh, which is um, to check, check to see if the destination is legal are we actually allowed to make this move because if we already have a stone there we can't move there we can't have two stones in the same tile if the opponent has a stone there we're allowed to move there because we jump on them and we bop them off the board unless they're standing in a safe spot which will be a function a feature of the game that we want to uh, develop later so there's going to be have to be a few checks to make sure that this tile that we want to move to is a tile where we're allowed to be in the end so well, uh, we'll be doing that later on. But now we've got the is done checking state. So let's verify that, All right? If I hit play and I roll the dice. Oh, I've changed the dice roller as well, right? Because the dice roller over here, the roll the dice, uh, we have to be able to put in a little check. If the, the state manager dot is done rolling is equal to true, oops, double equal signs. If it's true, then return. We've already rolled this turn. Boom. So if we go over here and we hit play, I can now only roll one time. I'm going to click on this and I can't click on anything else. There we go. You only get one turn. So now we just need to set the is done animating. So our player stone over here it's kind of responsible for that, right? Over here, we're doing an update. We're moving things. When are we done? Uh, we're basically, we're done making our move. Like this is the entire update routine is to animate our position. We're done moving when we, uh, right position, right height, let's advance the queue. Um, I would say it's the moment when the queue is empty. else the movement queue is empty so uh, we are done animating that's probably it what happens if you have a a zero move it'll still call this I think because I think it calls that every phase 
Ooh, that's an interesting question. Hold on. Debug.log test. I think we might be spamming this for every stone, every frame. Yep. You see how it's spamming the hell out of test over here? Because let's look at it logically. For every stone, update gets called every frame. And then for every stone, it's checking to see if it's in the place where it's supposed to be. And if it's at the place it's supposed to be, then it advanced the moves queue, which means this run and checks to see if the queues has stuff in it, yada, 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 and goes to else. I would propose, since update is just used for animation, we should do a, a check, the game, the state manager, dot is done animating. If is done animating is set to true, nothing for us to do, return. Now the problem is this. I mean, that'll work. And then over here, we can say something like, ah, the movement, moving queue is done, uh, is empty, so we're done animating. The state manager dot is done animating is equal to true. This is going to cause a problem for us. I'm going to hit play. You can see this still runs right away. Why is that? Well, because at the start of the turn, is done animating is set to false. Right? Because everything gets set to false at the start of new turn. So is it done? Is it set to true? It's not set to true. So we run through all this. We go to advanced move queue. And then we get to here. We set is done animating to true, which means every other stone then bails out for every frame. But that includes, if I roll the dice and click here, these stones are like, hey, I'm, I'm already done animating. Internally, this stone now thinks it's sitting over here, but it's not actually showing us the animation. We need... We kind of need something I would su su submit for each stone, whether or not this stone itself is doing an animation. State manager might actually need something a little bit more developed with is done animating because there might be multiple animations at once in the future. That's not what we're going to end up with right now. So what I'm going to do for each stone uh, right around here with all the move Q and move this, I'm going to say something like, bool is animating which is going to start out as false and what we're going to do is we're actually going to return to something like we're going to do something a little different in update if is animating is equal to false then there's nothing for us to do over here we're going to set over here this is what handles our mouse click so we're going to say we're done clicking but we're also going to specify that we are animating ourselves. Now it's possible if we if we're doing a zero move, this animation will end very quick. But basically, we're animating. We're done clicking, and we ourselves, this dot is animating is true. So then this update function only runs if we ourselves are are animating. Otherwise, we return. If we are animating, then we go through the entire logic check, and then finally, if we get to the else here, the movement queue is empty. So we can do two things. First of all, we can tell ourselves that we are no longer animating. Done. We are not animating at all. And f secondly, we can tell the state manager, all animations for this turn are done. In a bigger program with more animations, this state manager, instead of having a single Boolean that gets set for is done animating, you would probably do something like register yourself of, hey, state manager, I am one of possibly many things currently animating. You can't consider your, your, the turn as being done animating unless every single thing in this is done, which mostly means I would remove myself to the list. While I'm animating, I would add myself to this list. And when I'm done animating, I would remove myself from the list. And so the state manager would just check, hey, is this list empty or not? And if it's empty, then nothing's animating. But here we're going to be fine with just doing this. So let's give that a try. So first of all, if now if I hit play, nothing should spam the debug log with done animating. It is instead indeed empty. I'm gonna roll the dice. Again, I can only roll it once. I'm gonna click on one object over here. It's gonna animate. Oh. Wait, really? Wait, hold on. But it didn't say done animating.
What? Hold on, why is this not running? What was this doing before? Sorry, my apologies. Uh, also, for the, especially for the dead air. I'm just looking at the previous script over here. I feel like I did done break something. I mean, there was no else here before at all. Okay, first of all, I don't think this is being called because otherwise we get the debug message. Let me go in and comment that out. The role, I click on you. Okay, well, you that works with a one. There's a two. Hey, you finished. Are we getting infinite loop somewhere? Get a three. Oh, done. It. Wait, why didn't it work before? Hang on, I want to try to get a two. You know what I might have done? I might have accidentally tabbed out, and if you do, the game pauses. Because this is clearly working right. But that that could have... Th is that what I did? Roll, click. See, if I tab out, it'll... And there's the done animating. Which is indeed correct. I still can't click on anything here. If I roll the dice, nothing happens. And the fact that this ran means that our state manager is well aware that in an is animating or is done animating was set to true. Okay. Sure. Anywho, in state manager, we can do something like um, is the turn done? Again, if we if we used an enum, it would be very easy to check this stuff. We're not, so we're gonna have to verify for all these booleans. Again, the enum is certainly a lot cleaner, but let's keep going with this. So if is done rolling and is done clicking and is done animating then we've finished absolutely everything so we can just and for now it's just going to be debug.log uh turn is done and then we can do something like new turn Boop. something like this and if we do this we should actually be able to take two turns back to back because we're still not checking for like player logic roll click Wait for it to be done. Done animating. Turn is done. You can see this went back to a question mark. We're not resetting the graphics here, which I think is fine. We're going to roll the dice again, and I should be able to click on a thing again. Because the um, the stones here don't actually check to see whose turn it currently is. But in theory, internally, we're altering between player ID 0 and player ID 1. It's just the stones don't care, and we're not displaying it. We're also not checking for the legality of the move, but we've moved more of the logic over there. We've got a whole turn logic done. So next uh, next video, we are for sure going to actually go and uh, duplicate these stones um, so that we have uh, stones for both players, and we'll actually set the uh, stones to only care, to only move themselves if it's the correct turn. Thanks for watching. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye. Thank you to all the October patrons who make these videos possible, including these mic check supporters, Yoko Finn, Eric Sumner, Adam Keenan, Davey, Danny Welch, Tiburon, Mighty Mix, Pavel Zdanov, Michael McClintock, Aaron Tyson, Rorskal, Gurko Dries, TNSEE, Jasper Bisgard, Julien Gelafon, Marius Field Vold, Speedy Savant, Steven Steger, Thomas Oberson, Jason Yanity, Stephen Bonnerman, Easter Egg Productions, and Neil Blakely Milner, as well as everyone who likes, favorites, and subscribes to these videos. Thank you very, very much.